yes, of course, this is inherently dangerous. Mm. There are problems and there are, and you know, I hit a bird and that is, you know, a difficult thing. You're always going to have bird strikes as a pilot is part of the job sort of thing, unfortunately. Mm. However, um, sat in an office, somebody looking at you going, you have breast cancer, one of the most scariest things in my life. Mm. And, you know, I thought, fine, mm. okay, breast cancer's tried to kill me. So I'd, ra I'd rather go out and live my life and live it to the best possible way. This is the Ideas Lab podcast, where you can learn from great creative and entrepreneurial minds how to turn your ideas into original businesses, books, and brands. Because in a crowded world, it pays to stand out. This is your host, John Williams, best selling author and founder of the Ideas Lab London. Amanda Harrison is a graduate of one of my original Screw Work Let's Play programs. And she's had a dream for 15 years to recreate Amy Johnson's pioneering solo flight from the UK to Darwin in 1930. When Amanda was treated for cancer 18 months ago, it gave her the determination to make this dream actually come true. So now she's on her way on a 9,000 mile journey to Australia in a 1942 Tiger Moth biplane. And when I saw she was stranded in Vienna for a day after a bird strike damaged her propeller... I jumped up a chance to interview her in the aircraft hangar next to her plane. You can see the video of Amanda and get a close-up look at the Tiger Moth by going to theideaslab.org slash solo to Darwin. You can also find links there to track Amanda's journey and lend your support. Hello, Amanda. Welcome. Hello, John. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I'm standing in Vienna. Uh, airport hangar because I'm doing a solo trip from the UK to Darwin honoring Amy Johnson who was the first woman to fly from UK to London in 1930 in a gypsy moth mine's a tiger moth which is the next version along I couldn't afford a gypsy moth so I'm doing it in a tiger moth and it's a solo trip and at this point I think I'm utterly mad <laughs> I think you might be. Uh, so you're flying. How far is that? Is that what, what's the what's the diameter of the Earth? <laughs> <laughs> it's just under half. I'm flying nine thousand seven hundred and thirty-five nautical miles. Right. Ten thousand is, is just over half. So just under halfway around the world. Wow. And so this is a plane made in nineteen forty-two. The Tiger Moth. And so it's one of these, like, we can't quite see it from here, it's like one of these, it's a, is it a biplane? Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's like an old-fashioned biplane. It's amazing. Maybe, maybe we'll, you can take the iPad and have a look around um, in a minute and if, if the Wi-Fi reaches that far. But yeah. so you've wanted to do this for years, haven't you? Yes, I've, I've wanted to do this now for 15 years. I, when I first started flying, I've always wanted to fly uh, since the age of 14. And when I first started to fly in my 20s, I read about all these amazing people, Lady Mary Heath, Lady Mildred Bruce, Sir Alex Henshaw. And they were all, the, and they all did these amazing trips in the 1920s and 1930s around the world, around Antarctic, all that kind of thing. But they were all hugely, had huge amounts of money behind them. Lady, Sir, Honourable, mm -hmm. Lord. Uh, and then I read this book about Amy Johnson. And Amy Johnson was a normal, she was slightly middle class, but she was a normal person, just like me. She had to earn a living. She had to, when she did the trip, she had to come back and earn a living. Oh, she had well. to have a second-hand airplane, and she had to get sponsorship to do the trip. So I read about this incredible woman, Amy Johnson. She didn't have the best of health, um, mm. had family problems, all that kind of thing. And I suddenly thought, wow, if she could do it, maybe I could do it. <laughs> and it's only it took her six months to do it from the time that she wanted to do it to doing it yeah. and it's taken me 15 years so I'm a little bit of a talk <laughs> on this kind of thing so um yeah, yeah that's what I, I suddenly thought because I've always wanted to fly around the world and then I read about Amy and I thought well yeah I want, I want to sort of do it in that, in yeah. that style that's great and um uh and you did a course of mine a few years ago one of the screw let's play courses and uh yeah. That, and, and you said like you really got fired up after that because this is this is like your play project, right? Yes, yeah, th th this is my play project. And one of the reasons uh, I did Screw Work Let's Play is because I needed to learn how to speak, as I'm doing yeah. now. 
Yeah. Because, of course, people want to know about your trip. People want to know what you're doing, why you're doing it, uh, and also spreading the word of the, the reasons why I'm doing it. Mm. So one of the things was I, I picked up your book and I thought, wow, yes, maybe I could make a living from this. Mm. <laughs> it still hasn't come quite true yet, but it, it's starting to... It's starting you've, to you've at least got the sponsorship which allows you to make the trip, which is amazing. Now, you, you had a slight snag yesterday, which is why you're, you, you're in Vienna a little bit longer than you planned. What happened yesterday? Uh, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before. Oh, was it? Yeah. Uh, so on, on landing, if I can get my finger in the right place, yeah. you can see here, it's supposed to have, Axan is supposed to have a black nose. Mm. And uh, when I was rolling out on a cross, on quite a difficult crosswind landing, so you're coming in crosswind, a flock mm. of birds came over and one of them obviously hit that, bang, I heard a bang, and this black thing flew over my head. Mm. I'd just been congratulating myself on such a brilliant landing. It had been a very cold flight. It's the coldest May in 30 years here. So I'm flying like this. I landed. I was kind of like, ah, oh, great. And as I rolled out, bang, and the thing went over and I thought, oh, no. Um, so, but, yeah. so we should explain that like, there's no top on this aircraft, right? It's, it's no. open. <laughs> and you've got, a, you've got a windscreen that's about six inches. Yeah. And are you wearing goggles? Goggles, yeah. Goggles. yeah. Do you have a, a hat or something? A hat, yeah, yeah. An electric hat, we call it. So you've got um, your headphones. With, with the hat on the top and then the goggles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally mad. But I love it because it's that element uh, fighting. Yeah. Element. It's like climbing. If I was a climber, I'd be climbing Mount Everest because it's that kind of challenge. It's, it's that sort of thing. But yeah, so, mm. so um, I had lots of discussions yesterday with the engineering side of things. I've got lots of spares. So I'm going to get the spares out today and make sure I've got the right things. I don't need the nose cone to be there for flying. Yeah. But I need to make sure all these nuts are all all right, and there was a little bit of damage to the prop, yeah. so uh, I'm going to file that out and and paint that over mm. um, and sort it all out. So you normally you're normally flying jets, right? If you show us some of that, there's a few jets around you, aren't there? Is yes. it, are these private jets, these things, or the they're all private jets. I would think. I would think these were all um, personal owners. Wow. <clears throat> so don't read any of the registrations. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, yeah. they must wonder what's going on when they see you turn up <laughs> yes <laughs> yes uh, air traffic control is always a bit surprised about me and then yeah. i turn and, and park next to these jets and they're kind of you're flying what and you're doing what and you're what but this is it and, and this is when i read your book about about mm. playing for life instead of working for life and and i love working in the jet don't get me wrong i love it mm. but this is my ultimate and I thought, you only have one life. And uh, to tell you what happened from the course, so I did your course in 2014. Oh, yeah. It was 2014. Um, and my uh, dad at that point was getting poorly. And I, I skipped the, the, the first part of the course. I was up in Chillingham Castle because mm. my dad was doing one of his aeroplane models, putting it up in the castle, the water bird. And from that moment on, he, his health deteriorated mm. and he very uh, sadly died in 2018 of mm. an unknown brain disease, which is why I'm trying to promote sort of Alzheimer's research. Mm. And during all of that, my nan died and mm. then I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, God, yes. I saw something about that. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, only, so that was only 18 months ago or something, was it? Or a bit less than that, yeah. actually. Wow. Yeah, so only 18 months ago. Mm. And the, the cancer was what really... And my dad dying was what really propelled me into, do you know what, sell the house, do this. Just put all my life savings in. Don't tell my mother. My mother is not on Facebook, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't tell my mother that the overdraft is massive. But yeah, you know, people, mm. yes, of course, this is inherently dangerous. Mm. There are problems and there are, and you know, I hit a bird and that is, you know, a difficult thing. You're always going to have bird strikes as a pilot. It's part of the job sort of thing, unfortunately. Mm. However, um, sat in an office, somebody looking at you going, you have breast cancer. Yes. What, one of the most scariest things in my life. Yeah. And, you know, I thought, fine, mm. okay, breast cancer's tried to kill me. So I'd, ra I'd rather go out and live my life and live it to the best possible way. And it's great that you've recovered to the point where you can do that as well. So that's brilliant. No, it's, it's really inspiring. And I think what's, you know, we want to talk a little bit about your social media stuff because it's not something you naturally think about. You, what you're passionate about is the plane and about flying and about aiming. But 
um, you know, you're putting out photos and you're on Instagram. So if they search for Amanda Harrison, they'll find you, won't they? Yes, and Amanda Harrison Pilot, I think it is, yeah. Amanda Harrison Pilot. And you're on Facebook under your personal profile? I'm under personal profile, uh, yes, uh, Amanda Harrison Pilot again. But if you search for the, the website, is Solo to Darwin. Okay. Two, then number two, is it? Number two, yeah. So yeah. Solo to Darwin, number two. And that has all the social media on it. And that also has the tracker page. So oh, yeah. unlike Amy Johnson, she, she did it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm only on her first stop and I'm mm. massively now in awe of her than I've ever been. <laughs> so she's absolutely solo. Nobody was tracking her in the air. Mm. I've got a military grade tracker that tracks me every 10 minutes when I'm in the air. And mm. you can live watch my oh, new client across the world. It's on the yeah. tracker page. So from the homepage, if you, if you drop down yeah. onto the tracker page. Brilliant. And is that solo to darwin.com? Uh, yes, so loaded yeah. down. Uh, so, uh, sorry, it's it's um, Amanda J Harrison dot com. Yeah. Oh, okay. Amanda J Harrison dot com. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, you see, you see, you got to be get you got to get slicker at this marketing stuff. So, in actual fact, won't be really good, I think, because because you know you're busy flying and recovering and and, and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, how long are you flying for at a time? Uh, the longest will be across the Timor Sea, seven and a half hours. Oh, wow. Most of the trips are between four and five hours. And because the weather is getting in the way across you, it say it's the worst weather for 30 years. Mm. So I might have to do two little hops again tomorrow. So a three hour and a three hour. So yeah. Mm. And, and presumably you're just eating while you're up there and sort of chucking the things behind you in there. <laughs> you know what? It's been so busy up there in the cockpit. Oh, I managed really? little uh, rehydration tablets. They're yeah. the only things I've managed to have mm -hmm. and a sip of water. It's been so bumpy. I haven't been able to eat any of the breakfast bars. I've got breakfast bars. Yeah. Uh, Amy's flask and a packet of sandwiches. And of course, I can't take liquids through yeah. security. I'm, I'm under the same thing. So I can only take small bottles of water. So, um, <laughs> I, haven't, so I haven't actually done anything. And I know the next question you're going to ask uh, is the other side of things. Uh, yes, my bladder isn't that long, but the astronauts use nappies. And if they're good enough for the <laughs> astronauts, I use them as well. Good plan. Yeah. So, well, so with all this going on, you haven't really got a great deal of time for, for putting things on social media. And if, so if anyone like, I, I was going to put, so I want to put this video on Facebook and I'll put it on Instagram. And if anybody feels like they want to support what you're doing and the amazing story and, and Amy Johnson, and, you know, I think it's part of that story of what's going on at the moment of uh, people exploring, the, you know, pushing back some boundaries of what people think women should be doing. So I think that's a, a great thing to be doing. And um, so if anyone feels like getting involved and supporting that and wants to give a bit of free social media help to um, Amanda, then this would be a really good thing to do. You can message me or Amanda. Uh, it's up to you. You can message me on Facebook or, or email me at john at the ideas lab.org. And then maybe you could set up something where you have like a, a Dropbox or a Google Drive and you just go, here's some video I shot. Do something with it. Because okay. yeah. chances are you're not going to do it uh, otherwise because you're, you're busy, you know, yeah. either flying or, or, uh, or eating and recovering. The paperwork. The paperwork. Yeah. Just, oh, and the paperwork. Yes, yeah. I can imagine. The, the clearance. Then you didn't have to deal with that. You could just probably go wherever. Although, you know, we might talk a bit about what happened to her at the end. Um, so uh, if anyone wants to volunteer, just message either Amanda or me and uh, maybe, because it, it's going to take a couple of months, right? Yes, it's going to take a couple of months, yeah. So, I mean, if there's somebody who's good at social media and fairly techie can kind of take a file off, off uh, Google Drive or Dropbox and then upload it to, um, to all the different platforms where you'll have to give them your logins, then it might be a fun project to do. And also, if you're new in social media, it might be a good little test to raise your own profile. So that's our yeah. plug to try and get Amanda some help because otherwise... Uh, you know, she'll be busy doing other things. And I think video is very powerful. So, you know, yes. video every day. Uh, I don't want to be encouraging you to take video in the cockpit. It's going to risk your life. But obviously, if, if it's ever feasible, then that would be extremely cool. Uh, we probably wouldn't be able to hear anything you're saying. But um, the, the, the real problem is I, I have a GoPro. So I have, they're, they're, they're attached. They're attached by locking wire. So they're safe. They're, all the cameras are attached. Oh, good. Yeah. But the real problem is I'm in hotels or I'm in, or I'm, graciously staying in people's um, sofas and I can't upload the masses, masses amounts yeah. of files. So what, 
so that's also the problem. So one well, of the good thing is, that, yeah. the good thing is, if you guess something like we're getting into the techie details, but this is often what a project comes down to. So it's worth mentioning. But if you, yeah. so if you have something like Dropbox and you drop the file in there, you can basically go to sleep. And it yeah. will keep whirring away no matter how much, because I've, I've worked in Bali and all over the place, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, on holiday and things and, uh, and traveling. And, and Dropbox doesn't ever go, oh, I couldn't do it. I've given up. It just keeps going. So you'll wake up in the morning and all the stuff will be there for people. So anyway, you can always message me if you want more detail about that, Amanda. But it, can we have a look at the plane, you think? Yes. Yes, Is right. If I lose you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so there might be a bit of wobbling going on, but that's all right. <laughs> a, bit, a bit wobbling. So, it shows your map. I like the fact that you've got a map in there, but it's, it's built yeah. in. Oh, look at that. So this is oh, you, you, you're you breaking up a bit, though. Yes, um, is that because you've got a worse Wi Fi signal? That's the other side of that. Okay. Oh, Wi Fi. No, we can hear you now. That's okay. That's okay. Yep. yep. So, <laughs> what I did challenge, and in, this, in, in my boot, Oh yeah, have the map. I love that. <laughs> is that in case you get lost? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is what I'm navigating by. <laughs> wow! Look at that. You're going across India, across the Middle East, across India, across. Uh, is that Indonesia? Indonesia. Yeah. And then into Australia. Ooh, you could drop off in Bali then, see a few friends of mine down there, and then reaching Darwin, which is kind of the northern, yeah. most northwestern tip of Australia. Yeah. That's brilliant. What's it like in the back, in the actual cabin? Are you, are you ashamed to show us because there's loads of rubbish in there? No, no, it's not too right. bad. I've, I've yeah. got a stack of maps. And there's only one seat in the actual cockpit, is there? Yeah, yeah, stand by. Wow. That's it. One seat. If I go back, so, so that's my world for two months. Wow. Is. And if I stand back, mm. you'll see that it has the fuel tank. So this, uh, so the, mm. the front seat is a fuel tank. Right. And is it, is it safe, this thing? Because, you know, jets have all sorts of safety equipment in them. <laughs> oh, I, ha I have so much safety equipment, it's untrue. So okay. I have trackers, I've got PLBs, <laughs> the aeroplane has its own ELT, emergency locator beacon. I've got a personal locator beacon. Mm. I've got the military-grade tracker that also, as well as tracking me, um, mm. can, if I hit a red button, then mm. uh, they'll come and uh, help me, oh, hopefully. Right. So, but yes. Yeah. But you're not worried about it, uh, you know, failing in, in midair or something, because it's a, it's a 90-year-old plane. Um, but it, I guess what I realise is that a 90-year-old plane but serviced really well actually is not necessarily yeah. a dangerous thing, is it? Yeah, this is it. Um, I've had this aeroplane since 2015, and it's been serviced by Aircraft Restoration Company, and they're also on the end of the phone um, helping me with all of this. And they have been amazing. And as they say, it's, it's an engine, it's one of the most simplest engines on the planet. So therefore, as long as it's got fuel and oil, it should mm. just keep going. Oh, so, okay. mm. yeah, it's, um, it's going to struggle a bit in the heat. I'm going to have to see what it's, what it's like in the, in the heat because it, it'll be, you know, <laughs> climbing very, very slowly because she likes the cold, of course. Axan mm. loves the cold at the moment because the, the air's, the, there's a lot more air particles packed into it. So therefore, mm. it makes it better with the fuel. Whereas when it's hotter, there's less... Mm particles so therefore she has to she has to work fa faster mm -hmm. to get there okay. yeah but wow yes, that's, that's fantastic I, and, and so you'll be when are you aiming to arrive i was hoping to arrive in uh mid uh, at the early june but i think it's going to be later on in june now right okay well that's brilliant so if people want to follow what you're doing they can go to amandajharrison.com <laughs> Yes. and uh, find you on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and I'll put some links under this where, wherever I post this video. And if anyone wants to help you out with social media and uploading videos to places and just sort of trying to put a bit more content out, and that would be great. Just let Amanda or me know and we'll sort it out. Cool. Well, thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Very best of luck to you. Thank you. Screw work. Let's play. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Ideas Lab podcast. Please do subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this episode, it would be great if you could leave us a review. You can get links and details of everything mentioned in the podcast in the show notes, along with photos and video clips from many of our episodes. Just go to theideaslab.org forward slash podcast.